Oh, okay, so with the electronic harassment of me, a number of character categories are used. Uh, on When they first turn it on you, they don't say, you know, it, it's Scott Dougal from um, product development from Google doing interactive online experiences, and this is a... Um, it's not a, a beta test of uh, our uh, lab software. You know, it's fully rolled out. Uh, well, it's called um, synthetic telepathy and synthetic telekinesis. So the synthetic telepathy is me using a technology called voice to skull to um, beam my voice into your mind. And then we're going to use synthetic telepathy, which is a... Um, I'm not sure of how scientifically, engineeringly, there. I don't have access to the vocabulary of the people who have made this voice to skull or a synthetic telepathy. I don't know. I don't know the details of the technology at all. In old school ways, how would I do it if I was going to try and do it? Well, um, um, I'm I'm I I'm the people that are are doing this electronic synthetic telepathy are blocking uh, words from coming out right now. Uh, so, I don't know. How, what kind of things in science have we learned that can transmit uh, invisibly over long distances? Electromagnetic radiation. I think we're done. Okay, so now we're going to go on to, um, well, uh, mm, general categories of characters. Okay, then, uh, so you didn't get Scott Dougal from Google t giving you that introduction. No, what happened to this person, me, Bobby Burroughs, is I was sitting on the love seat in the living room, and um, I heard the voice to skull for the first time. I didn't know if it was voice to skull. I just, in my head, I just heard... Uh, you be me and I be you, in kind of an accented voice, which uh, was later told to me to be Rumpelstiltskin. Somebody's going to say the same from TV's Once Upon a Time, the answer is no. It was not the actor Robert Carlyle's voice. It did not have... <laughs> they did not have that because that Robert Carlyle version of Rumpelstiltskin always does that. The Rumpelstiltskin that talked to me had none of Robert Carlyle's uh, characteristics of his portrayal of Rumpelstiltskin. None. It was much later that that uh, actor portraying Rumpelstiltskin uh, was just what well, didn't express any emotion whatsoever, but I was quite like. Surprise when um, somehow during the course of a long period of events, um, we came across their their shopping on D on Amazon. There was um, DVDs of uh, Once Upon a Time, and uh, Rumpelstiltskin said buy it, and forced me to spend my own money to purchase something for the character actor coming voice to skull to me. That actor made me spend a lot of money on things. Yes. I had no choice. It had uh, it had um, ability to, as you can see, affect my physicality. That is just using force. So um, now what else? So the the characters that initially came was a Rumpelstiltskin who was a. Um, uh, um, and then uh, a horrible nightmare came. Pindar the Horrible, Pindar, um, Bibliotheca Capladies, um, it gives you an article on the internet.
And um, just because I've been doing some research on uh, David Icke. David Icke wrote um, that the um, British royal family are extraterrestrial uh, reptilians. Recently we've learned, um, someone's figured him out, David Icke is also um, another person. It's a, a difficult... Okay, I'm being electronically harassed, so I can't give you any more information than David Icke. Um, David Icke turns out to be the same person as Sir Richard Branson. Sir Richard was made a Sir by Queen Elizabeth, the, person, the people that David Icke writes about. So, um... The word that they want to elicit from me is PSYOP. Why? Because this is some group of people who are torturing me to make a manifesto out there about why they're torturing me. It's a demonstration of, um, if it's not Google Labs, then it's somebody like Bungie. Bungie made, uh, this is eliciting from Bob a memory of something that Bob did play video games a long time ago and getting product placement for, um, did Bungie pay for that, or was it just, you know, a, a murderous shot of sullying the name of Bungie by Activision? That was all elicited through me, okay? And I don't even get a paycheck. All of this shit that I'm doing right now, talking for all of you, this is considered a gift from me, the gift economy to all of you. Because I have to keep working with all of this. I do not consent. Blah, 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 intron, 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 fast forward. Something about too many times a uh, capitalist economy and uh, uh, I don't have any money coming in. Don't I look handsome in this light? Okay, Jar Jar Binks what ruined the Star Wars franchise. Because it was... Um, the character was not uh, authentic. Jar Jar Binks doesn't look like me. It's not sentient. It was painted in as a cartoon character. Jar Jar Binks in A computer-generated character that should have not been included in Star Wars. Well, then you're going to say, okay, well then, if I was going to argue it the other way, is, we, well, we put it in there because it teaches people a lesson. And that is, humans can feel whether, you know something is what we would call alive and something that we would call um, inanimate inanimate in no that's incorrect inanimate that's how you pronounce it and it means not animated with life this is not considered life no this is not alive uh, is this thing a dead thing that's it, it, it's incorrect it's because it was never alive. If you say dead, it implies at one time it was alive. That's incorrect. Inanimate. It's it, it's made of, um, of plastics. So if this is inanimate, then something that moves, that's alive, is animate. A n I don't know, I can't spell it right now under electronic harassment. Okay, so Jar Jar Binks uh, is a character that just doesn't seem alive. It doesn't act alive. Okay, so moving on. So what do we think about... Well, I don't know. The characters, the... Um, the characters that are used to interface with me... Uh, are on the quality of Jar Jar Binks. They don't grow. If they do portray other characters, those characters do not have um, 
spirit, a connection with great spirit. That's a, a punishment for me doing a mistake, which is the, um, there's two blah, 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 blah. Everybody understands everything about video games that uh, the computer can play your character or you can play your character directly. And if the computer plays the character, in my case, the computer always acts like it's incapable of being um, equivalent to the real live organic actor who portrayed Commander Data. Brent Spiner. But are we sure that Brent Spiner is indeed human? He acts like all the time like a human actor. Yes. Have we ever met anybody who is human who um, is as bad as a computer generated um, character? Too many questions are being beamed at me at the same time my voice to skull. Anyway, so this, uh, this, these different scenarios appear to you from Google Labs when they appear uninvited into your life. Is it possible that Amazon and other big tech companies are making the same kind of technology? Yes, it's probable. Uh, um, I cannot say. I have to have to think about it under war game simulations and then we would do a Monte Carlo of different combinations and permutations. You know, in the olden days when this was all elicited. So for the viewing public, um, in the olden days when I was, I don't know, six years old when they were testing my eyes to see if um, uh, glasses would improve my vision, there was a million different combinations of you just spin them around of lenses. Is this one better or this one better? This one or this one? This one or this one? Go back, go back. I'm not quite sure on that one. Okay, this one, that one, that one. Okay, and they would go through a million different combinations. Was this MK Ultra um, mind control? Uh, yes. I don't know the details, but they just wanted me to talk. They, they elicited a yes, and then I would give you a talk. And then they would say, well, give me the other side of the argument, because I can. I can talk around an argument. I don't know if everybody can or not. If, if you took the mind control off of everybody, could they do it? Um, I'd have to ponder that, because that's what I've been elicited to give you. I, would I give you an answer? I, mean, I don't know if electronic mind control was on for a long period of time. No. Okay, what other things? So, um, were the, the operators of this um, AI slash organic um, intelligence uh, Armis? And behind Armis is... Um, an oracle mm, that makes sense thank you for watching and if you um, are wondering you know I need a big paycheck if I'm going to be under continuous electronic harassment and um, I don't know that was my request. I need a lot of money. Because this has gone on for like six years of me being, you know, involuntary, no, uh, involuntary, uh, involuntarily um, put under an imposed virtual reality overlay over my existing reality. Because my existing reality in the physical is it's very expensive. I'm given the fact under electronic harassment I cannot work for money. I'm running down my life savings and you know I could use like a really nice big block of houses. Well this is what the people, the operators of this electronic tortures have suggested that I deserve 
Um, in Vancouver, Canada, there's uh, um, some homes that back onto um, well, what would be considered Pacific Ocean. Uh, well, there. Um, um, adjoining uh, real estate to uh, Kitsilano Park and they have beautiful old trees and they're beautiful homes they're beautiful high-end homes and the whole it's like a, it's being considered by the operator if the area well it would be considered you know it uh, They're considering the word cul-de-sac. It's French term, and in English it just meant you know a dead end street where it just comes to a dead end. It stops, and then sometimes at the end of that, it's like uh, the original design is that they gave you some space to turn your car around a circle. And people are trying to say, well, is a cul-de-sac the same as the dead end street? And the answer is. Um, In general terms, uh, they're equivalent, but if you want to go into detail, they're not the same. If you went to the furthest detail on each of those two words, you would say that a dead-end street might not have a turnaround area. It might just stop. They might have just stopped making a road at that spot, and that was the end of But if they put up a barrier there, across, that would be like you couldn't drive any further without breaking the barrier, etc., etc. I got another horrible energy coming in my ear, my physical sensations. It's a horrible attack, and it's supposed to be a cute introduction to the cosmic character who always wants to be known as... So at this point, it's just that, you know, you could insert any, there's a, any character who um, change gears and moving along. Terms often used, um, you know, by various of these um, characters that I talk to. You know, if you went to the psych ward, or what, no, incorrect, incorrect, if you... We're going to Dr. Hampy, the psychiatrist uh, at St. Joseph's Care Group at Victoriaville, um, of a city-owned mall complex where St. Joseph's um, psychiatric branch has an office building. I did, and I saw um, whatever um, Dr. Hampy's name is, uh, well, because that's what they do well when you have when you've um well i don't know when you go through all of this electronic harassment over so many years well, sooner or later you end up with a major psychotic episode yes and then you end up in the psych care of uh, the state of canada yes and then what is your thoughts about dr hampy and their diagnostic skills as far as diagnosing electronic harassment, psychosis. Oh, um, it just seems that um, Dr. Hampy is, um, should he have known that electronic harassment was possible? Um... Well, if we start with the the possible answers of yes, no, or I can't determine, or if you say, let's try and go down this path where Dr. Hampy had um, an education similar to yours. I mean, Robert David Burroughs, I've got a Bachelor of Science and a Master's in Business Administration uh, from 
McMaster University. If he went to McMaster University and he hadn't had any uh, private briefings with CIA, if Dr. Hampy had not heard of MK Ultra, MK Ultra mind control, uh, then um, I'd consider him incompetent and uh, medically malpractice. Yes, malpracticing. Because it was on uh, one of the news magazines on Canadian television. It was uh, W5 or electronic harassment right now. Sorry, electronic harassment. I, that's whatever that looks like to Dr. Hampy. Uh, whatever you saw right now it was elicited to show you that's electronic harassment. So W5 or I don't know, there was another one, but one of those ones, and you can go on YouTube and look up Dr. Ewan Cameron. McGill University MK Ultra psychiatric patients CIA interviews with um, CIA, MK Ultra, um, people who were tortured by that government program. Yes, people who were tortured by this uh, because Dr. Cameron was what he was called was um, in essence, if you're going to go and describe it, well, what's the story about? Uh, okay, I can't. I'm being blocked from. This is all being more mind control. This is all mind control, and the different voices that are coming out are um, uh, high tech voice to skull that gets right into wherever parts of the brain are that make languaging skills. So you could elicit in somebody, an un untrained person, an opera voice. I bet you they could. Yes. Because I've seen them do voices. Like some of the voices that change like this. This is the computer uh, controlling the voice box and eliciting that whatever that change in voice was. They also affect the breathing. They can control your breathing directly. I don't know. They interfere with... I can't tell you. I don't know. That me, I'm saying... I don't know. I haven't had a full demonstration of every possibility. Uh, I don't know how far they've gone. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can they kill me by remote control? My, my belief is yes. But it's possible that I'm a Luke Skywalker who used, uh, he called it the Force, and in that last Star Wars, um, uh, Kylo Ren was using, uh, Kylo Ren was using super lots of energy beam at um seemed to be a projection of something of that was like Luke Skywalker and Luke Skywalker was using that as a shield Luke did seem to be fully immersed in the experience in other words he had to use all of his attention to do what he was doing and the question is are other aspects of Luke Skywalker, um, hidden aspects, we'll call them, busy at work doing other things, other intelligent things that this particular 
uh, instance or iteration of the person Luke Skywalker, what they're doing with the shielding against Kylo Ren. I don't know, as you can see, then the, the brain becomes, that's too expansive. There's too much, there's the way it might, it's infinity where I can go from there. Well, sometimes it's good to know because then you can relax. Or sometimes it's too much and you become paranoid. It's like, I'll never get the right choice. Anyways, um, that is your talk this morning on... Oh, well, Dr. Hampy. Well, yes, he should. Can we assume that he did see it? No, we can't. So can we blame him uh, for not seeing that? Uh, that should have been... I don't know. That should have been... I don't know. Uh, well, if it hadn't, it had uh, electronic harassment. Do we think Kyle Hampy um, should have known about that, given his position as... Um, well, I knew about it. Is it possible that uh, in Kyle's... Um, Kyle Hampy was his name. Uh, is his name. I'm sure he's still alive. Well, putting all that aside, as far as their diagnosis skills, the bedside skills, Kyle Hampy, uh, two thumbs down. Fucking asshole is what I would call him. Medical malpar malpractice, yes. He has got, um, okay, now they're, they're trying to, electronic harassment is suggesting that Kyle Hampy has a um, messianic, grandiose personality disorder. In other words, he thinks he's God. Yes, and then he presents as um, a glad handler faggot. What's a glad handler? Everybody knows what a faggot is. I'm a gay man. Uh, if you were going to use a, a, a racial epithet against me, you might say a fucking faggot. You might be getting, like, um, through clear cognizance, um, examples of supercilious behavior. I don't know. A lack of empathy, lack of compassion for me, which indicates um, a problem with heart chakra, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Hampy. I, I, as a energy healer, a Reiki person? Me. That's what I... Whatever was given to you, I'm sorry, it's... We have to move on because electronic harassment on me. It's a horrible thing. It's a pulsing thing, you know, like as if a... If you had a penis and, you know, it has an orgasm and it splurts. It pumpa, pumpa, pumpa. I don't know. I can't help you out. It's not elicited. I don't know. I can't go anywhere. Is that just? Isn't that amazing? I don't know. They're trying to elicit. Uh, I'm trying to get a word. I can't help you out. Electronic harassment. Don't send that horrible, horrible. Could that be um, uh, a torture? Brent Beeson, the devil, is the character that often does this. Brent the orc. Um, no, it's Bruce the Orc. Bruce the Orc is Brent Beeson. Brent is also Brant Beeson. Um, it, but he's an interrogator character, long-time interrogator, torturer of me. Is it a real human being, or could it be an electronic AI like General Grievous? But we always thought General Grievous was a bad example of um, an AI. Mm. Electronic harassment block EV from pondering where we might go with that. So we're going to be moving along. Okay, uh, guys, um, so um, are we done with Kyle Hampy? Um, uh, Fogelin, the other psychiatrist that I saw, uh, malpractice? Yes. Um, Rumpelstiltskin, the human... Rumpelstiltskin came across as a, a human, again, with heart chakra problem. No heart. Some heart. Anyways, a green ray. 
Ascended Masters teaching Green Ray of the Chakra System. You look up Chakra, C-H-A-K-R-A, and Green Ray, Heart Chakra. Uh, Carl Hampe, in those days, um, not activated green. You need this one. Rumpelstiltskin, the same problem, still today. I would say, oh, I can't, yeah, uh, the, what, uh, electronic harassment. Because my, my feelings can be, um, they elicit cold feet. When I feel my feet in the past couple of days when they turned on uh, electronic harassment, they could elicit cold feet. Were my feet actually cold or did they just feel cold? They felt cold and looking at them, it looked like the blood supply had been affected to make um, them actually cool. So, yeah, can they kill me by the... Yes, I've said before, if they wanted to kill me, um, why wasn't um, Brent Beeson allowed to kill me? He's, um, um, there's somebody who's a, a supervisory level over Brent Beeson. Could it be this? Yes, the person could give themselves permissions and, um, you know, put a number of firewalls between it and, you know, the the final switch. Just gameplay, whether to make it seem like it's really important to get this um, particular item right now or you're going to die horribly horribly so go forward and rush through rush 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 because you got to get to that key because you're under massive attack and it hurts like hell and you feel like you're going to drop dead and then if you it, but if there was another person a second human and that person had um god power over the operator brent beeson then beeson could only do what he was given on his pick list of things that was limited by somebody else. And that's possibly the way it operates from time to time. Um, you know, the organization of the... Um, blah, 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 means that the words aren't coming in and being elicited fast enough because um, that's the way it presents to you. But we often consider the character Brent Beeson, or known as the Packy, which is the, the operator who... Uh, appears to be uh, small-minded and dumb and always goes into Groundhog Day always ends up just being incapable of talking it has to go sometimes they use King Clancy King Clancy is another torturer um, personality based on Clancy Wiggum of the Simpsons good god they always do this they go way way down way too many Instead of going straight down the path, uh, they went this way. We have to back up, back up, back up, back up, back up to the intersection. Back up, back up, back up, and we're trying to get them. They're too dumb to take a hint that if we have to go back to where we were and go back to what we were talking about earlier. Okay, because we went down Clancy Wiggum Street, and we've got to go back up because we didn't want to go down Clancy Wiggum Street because we just wanted to tell you about that character but that is called King Clancy is like Brent Beeson under 200 on the scale of human consciousness so scale of human consciousness uh, is available on the internet and uh, um, under 200 is a dead zone. Anybody under there, um, you're on a downward spiral to death. Uh, that is that true? Did you get that, Claire Cog? I can't possibly give you anything more than what is elicited right now. Uh, okay, now moving along. Okay, that's just more demonstration of electronic harassment on me. What it feels like physically and looks like. So, I don't know, Kyle Hampy, now you've had 35 minutes of me explaining electronic harassment and uh, the type of characters. So you need to learn scale of human consciousness, Kyle Hampy. And right now, I would pull your license as a medical doctor. 
well, you need to do what I said. You could try vipassana meditation for, I don't know, go there. To open your heart chakra. But will it work? Um, go there. And then, I don't know. I can't possibly do 8 billion people determining if your heart chakra is open or not. But you could muscle test. I don't know with electronic harassment. I don't. I, I can't say that works. Did it ever work? Well, you know, it does give us a good framework that um, the torturers want me to use. So you need to be at 540 or higher on the scale of human consciousness in order not to be discombobulated, because that's the imposed galactic law. Is it a good galactic law? How much time should we give people to get up to 540? Well, the torturer said you should already be there. And if you're not, I don't know. Anyways, Kyle Hampy, um, it is requested that you go to Vipassana meditation. It's free, and I think it's like two weeks. You don't need to bring anything. Everything is supplied. Well, you get yourself some yoga cloud, whatever. Vipassana, it might be .org. VIP, VIP. See, it's VIP for everybody. Vipassana. You wanted to know why Vipassana? VIP is what it starts with. A, S, A, N, A. Probably spelled like that. Maybe two N's instead of one. It's pay it forward. So you go for free, Kyle, and then um, if you're as rich as me, you're making half a million dollars a year, Kyle, you can afford to donate, I don't know, a huge philanthropic amount of your entire life savings. Everything. Give it all. Give it away, and then Spirit's going to show you lots of stuff. Anyways, because they need lots of money, Kyle, because they're going to have to go on a construction spree. Because Vipassana has got to go, well, when, I don't know, after, until your heart chakra is open, Kyle, you're going to stay at Vipassana. And Vipassana needs smart people, Kyle to expand the organization because you're going to have to expand it you're going to need way more centers so uh, you don't need to do that Kyle because that's not, not your background so just do Vipassana, Vipassana, Vipassana and then if you become somebody who you know hits 600 peace keep going higher and higher in consciousness because you're supposed to follow your feet if you're at 600, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Anyways, then you would be considered um, a perfect, which is a spiritual title of someone who is at 600 on the scale of human consciousness. And uh, David R. Hawkins told us, I don't know, 25 years ago, that everybody on the planet could get to 540 in that lifetime. Well, it's still that lifetime, and I'm not going to wait till everybody's 102 before we say, well, you know, that's the end of your original human lifetime, because Mark LaViolette, who was like a year older than me, died at age 52 when he retired from the post office. So, you know, there's no time. So anyway, get your consciousness going, Kyle. Thank you for, um, oh, it seems like, I don't know, it's time for moving on and moving along. Uh, and then uh, every psychiatrist that I've met is uh, incompetent. Um, no, the psychiatrist that, um, uh, the Toronto psychiatrist that flies from Toronto to uh, Thunder Bay Regional Hospital, we think he's like a, he's a Sidney Friedman kind of uh, psychiatrist. No. No, he's not on the level of Sidney Friedman uh, from MASH. No, in the mold of Sidney Friedman, um, 
No. Was he better than the two packies? Uh, yes. The two packies were impossible. Yeah, they were actually looked like they were from Pakistan because they didn't fully understand English. That's true. I did test, the, but they didn't. I didn't get it. That was my impression. And they didn't know the Carl Jung, one of the founding fathers of psychi psychology. And we took in psychology 101. Synchronicity. Find the term synchronicity. You remember the band, uh, the Police. Well, they had an album in the 1980s called Synchronicity. Now, not, I don't think we knew what synchronicity meant. We knew there was two songs: Synchronicity One, Synchronicity Two. That we we didn't understand. We did the the album did not explain, and we didn't have the internet in those days. Anyways, we did get. In Canadian school, Robertson Davies, uh, we studied at Sir Winston Churchill High School in Thunder Bay. Now it's electronic harassment. Horrible right on me right now. Horrible. Horrible. So it's blocking me my ability to talk right now and get words. So this is electronic harassment. So, right, that's what that looks like. It's horrible and it is very unpleasant. That's Brent Beeson, the character that is being used. So, uh, uh, this is an involuntary um, educational film for you. I'm not being compensated for this. This is you know, my own lifeblood that's being going to this torturous cause of keeping the packy and the packy operator, I don't know, occupied because they're Brent Beeson right now. Okay, we're 42 minutes into this documentary. Okay, so uh, Margaret Sinclair um, Trudeau, Pierre Elliott Trudeau's much younger wife, um, was reputed to be involved with Dr. Cameron and she being a tortured person by Dr. Cameron. Do we have any evidence that Margaret uh, um, went through this? Um, well, if I'm going through this right now, then did sure say that it was. Could it be partly voluntary? In other words, it put her in a situation where she's with the Rolling Stones, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger, and there's maybe cocaine, but they do something like that. Uh, well, the story that was available through whatever limited public access that we had was that Margaret Trudeau smoked marijuana cigarettes at 24 Sussex Drive uh, in front of RCMP security service. Yes, we heard that. And we heard that, um, well, if you were in what it appeared to be un... Um, I don't know if she was allowed to smoke weed, then she was also allowed to meet up with the Rolling Stones and they might have done acid and fucked and then they had a really good time because they had well I, do you think they had fun or not well I, I have not met the rolling stones no i've seen them yes do you think keith richards could be a fun guy yes do you think keith richards could be a brent beeson mm, they're not letting me say no there, but I you know, this is all scripted through. This is all pre-scripted. So whatever the script appears to be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If I met Brent Beeson, could Brent Beeson portray an open-hearted person? Yes. Yes, he can. What about writing all over his Tesseract Cube? I, it's a theoretical thing. Tesseract Cube uh, is related to uh, Stuart Wilde, mm, is it? Maybe Stuart Wilde. Uh, Chris Krepchik, uh, yes, the hoodedsage.com, but behind the paywall. It could be there. Yeah, good chance it was there. But yeah, let's say Chris Krepchik and Stuart Wilde information about your personal records in the Akashic field. Does it have to be sacred geometry? Um, I would say no. Waveform um, 
Printouts from electronic instruments. I don't know. Electronic harassment is blocking me from giving you things. It look cute. What I, like if you saw that, but you put musical overlay, what I just did there, could that look like a cute acting on screen? You'll have to judge that. But they're giving me to say yes. Okay, I'm getting, they're, they're giving, eliciting hunger in me. Right now. Right now, it feels like, you know, well, I don't know. They can elicit that. Yeah, they can elicit um, um, choking, um, dry mouth, dry eyes. Yes, they can make your eyes close out of bed. Yes, can they give you um, um, brain fog? Absolutely. Can they put tones in your ears that they have told you previously are downloads from spirit? You know, they can be unpacked like Amanda Lawrence. Something like that could be elicited in you. Yep. Could they elicit synchronicity in your life? We're leaning towards no. Because if they say yes, then the answer is you are in a matrix, just like uh, Keanu Reeves. Um, hold on, Keanu Reeves a training program. In the Matrix movie, where they have full control of the environment, but I don't know. In the end, are you human or are you electronic? Um, I'm human. I'm not electronic. I'm under electronic harassment. It's completely illegal what is being done to me under Canadian law. This would be considered terrorism, what is going on against me. Attempted murder, multiple coins, multiple counts, affected by electronic harassment. That was elicited. But still, it is terrorism. And the penalty in Pakistan, when I was with Brent Beeson and we looked it up. Okay, what are we getting out here? We have a Trans X truck that's leaving. And there was a message on there from the spirit. I call it God. And what I know we get messages when I go for a walk, uh, things will just come out the window. Now, Brent Beeson does not control the Matrix. And he'll do lots of uh, things to force his opinions upon me. But it doesn't change the truth. The truth is that this is an electronic harassment. It's a technology that they try to convince you that you are living in Neo in a training matrix that they even control synchronicities. And they've done that with me, but the reality I can't go anywhere because it's under intense electronic harassment, but I could talk about yes, I could talk about no. But as a real human, this is all elicited but it's true. As a human, I don't know. Life is, just seems more more than being controlled. So I don't know. I was going to talk about this. If we give them a moment to turn off. The electronic harassment. It hasn't been turned off. Hasn't been turned off demonstrations of electronic harassment of my face. I'm blocking connections to source. Okay, so what other things uh, could come up if I talk very fast? Let's see, talk very fast, and I can talk about beer. Does beer, um, can it be, um, blah, 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 good? Blah, blah, bad, blah, 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 beer. Blah, 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 Bob and Doug McKenzie are Canadian actors who... <laughs> Hi, I'm eliciting Pindar. Hi, this is interesting. Pindar is coming through. 
Hi, it's Pendar. I'm a channeled entity. I'm a real and I, I I don't really have to decide. Anyways, this is an involuntary um penetration of another personality into Bob's body. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, so Kyle Humphrey, if you see somebody do this, well, on stage you're going to say, that guy does amazing voices and impressions. That guy's a comic. So Rumpelstiltskin, when he first came and I first made videos, was forced to. Um, well, that's what he, I don't know, electronic harassment blocking me from continuing to give you a good video. Okay, they can turn it up and turn it down. This electronic torture with human operators, intrusive thoughts. So if you ever heard of a psychiatrist say you have intrusive th thoughts and you hear things in your head, the answer is yes. You can just see all of this is like, is it human uh, abilities? Um, uh, uh, Aaron Abke on uh, YouTube talks about astral projection. Um, can astral projection be combined with electronic um, harassment? Yes, you just saw it. Yes. Can you do computer-controlled recordings of humans um, doing things and then um, having it on, you know, have it on a, a button where you just hit that button and then you could have uh, Sam Elliott, the actor, say, hey, that year one tough hombre. Yes, did that happen to you? Yes. Did it feel like it really was? Sam Elliott saying it to me personally, Bobby Rose? Yes. At the time, did it make you feel better? Yes. Or could it have been the spirit uh, doing that to help you out? Mm. Electronic harassment prevents me from giving you an answer. Is an easy answer for me. Okay, moving on. Electronic harassment. Blah, 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 What's going to happen next? I don't know. It's been six years of this. Every day. All the time. Anyways, is it an interesting subject for you? Electronic harassment, MK Ultra, um, Brent Beeson, King Clancy, uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron, W5, The Fifth Estate, mm, Canadian news magazines, um, um, the Galactic Federation of Light. Those are the extraterrestrials that are supposed to be... Um, oh, we were talking about Stuart Wilde having an office on Carnaby Street. Yes, in the documentary um, information, we've done lots of research on Stuart Wilde, the author, and Carnaby Street uh, was given to us in one of his talks as a place where he had sold jeans in London, England. Anyways, well, it is a link, because we saw that, um, we picked that up yesterday at Chopper's Drug Mart when Brent Beeson, the devil, was acting very stupid and very mean. And um, Edith Prim, Edith Prim, Edith Prim, okay, um, Jar Jar Binks we were talking about, okay, this pink one here. Can you see the pink one? That, that one there, that's her. That's her avatar. Okay? That's her avatar. Edith Prim, uh, hopefully you can see. So you animate that character. And um, uh, take the, uh, from Harry Potter, Dolores Umbridge. That's her, Dolores Umbridge, and make her that avatar. That's Mrs. Prim. Just as vicious and violent, yes. Uh, that story is... Um, uh, blocked, electronically blocked. I'll tell you that story uh, in another video. Okay, we got to go.